Okay, welcome to Online Lab 1. Uh, I know this isn't ideal. It'd be better if you built these circuits by hand, but I'm going to demonstrate how to build them and how to take some measurements. And then these are design labs in any case, and so then you'll be submitting your designs to both uh, Professor Flippo and to me, Dr. Rumsey, and we will help you perform the measurements needed to get the data that you need to write your reports. Uh, now again, if you can um, download Cadence, we highly recommend that you download Cadence. There is a free student version uh, because it's good to get practice using Cadence as you will be using it in future courses. And in future courses, we expect you just to know how to use it. Now, before we actually start looking at the lab here, let's just talk about um, what it is we're going to be building. Now, there's a bunch of videos online on Blackboard that explain how filters work. And the one that we're, well, there's two that we're going to be doing, but the one that I'm going to show you the measurements on, and then I'll explain that the measurements for the other one are exactly the same. It's just the circuit's slightly different. As we have this here, which this is a resistor, this is a capacitor, this is my input voltage, and this is my output voltage. And as my video uh, explained, this is a low-pass filter. It's first order. You will probably, if you watch the videos, if there was a slide or a picture I showed you of what the filter responses look like between first, second, third, fourth, so on and so on order, because um, you can get closer to that ideal filter. So this is a first order, so it's not going to be that close to an ideal filter, but it's, it's nice and easy for us to work with to start with. And the cutoff frequency here, um, if you want it in hertz, is 1 over 2 pi times RC. This would be in hertz. And if you wanted it in radians per second, it's just omega C, which is 1 over RC. And this is in radians per second. Now, we're often given designs in hertz, so we often will use this equation more for design. Um, but omega C is also still a correct formula. It's just in different units. All right. So it might take me a second. I'm going to switch here to my camera and I'm going to get this adjusted. So I'm going to focus on the breadboard first. And you can see I've got an oscilloscope. Um, this is actually at my home. Um, hopefully my cats won't bother us or anything. Uh, and the oscilloscope I have is not identical to the ones we have in the lab, but it's close enough that it will uh, serve purposes for us. So the circuit, I, I'm just picking random components here. I have a resistor that's just slid off. I have a resistor and a capacitor. I don't even know what values I picked. I just picked two random values out of my component kit. Um, actually, I do know that this is a one kilo ohm. That this is a one kilo ohm resistor here, because of the color bands on it. But I don't know what kind of capacitor that is. But that's okay. We're still going to build build the circuit here, and it's a pretty straightforward circuit. Um, doesn't take us long to build it, because basically. What I have right here, that's that's the circuit. Remember, the resistor and capacitor are, are tied together. Um, and then the other end of the capacitor, I'll put a wire in for us. This is going to be ground. And then the other end of the resistor, of course, that's my, my input. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you um, a measurement that we can actually verify that this is a low-pass filter, um, but it's not going to give us a very um, good way to measure important parameters. So what I'm connecting up here, so I'll scroll over, is I'm just connecting up, this is a function generator. Now it looks different than the ones we have in the lab, but it works exactly the same. I'm going to make a sine wave, um, and then I'm going to turn that sine wave on and put it in here. So I'm going to turn my supply on here takes a second to power it up and I've got a sine wave at one kilohertz 
I'm going to actually change the frequency to 100 kilohertz. Um, and it's a 5 volt um, sine wave. All right, so let's go ahead and take this here, probe, and I'm going to go ahead and just connect this up to the input to verify what I have here. If I can connect this up here correctly. Now, let me focus on the oscilloscope because it's connected up to the breadboard. Now, some people like to use the auto set button, which, as I said, this is a slightly different oscilloscope, same manufacturer, slightly different. And there is an auto set button over here on this oscilloscope. I, I really don't like using the auto set button. I think it's important to understand these controls and the controls here. So there's always this horizontal position control here. And then there's this vertical position control. And the horizontal, of course, changes my time scale. So I just have to adjust that a little bit so I can see this sine wave coming in here. And we can see that I've already put two measurements on here, what the maximums are. So the maximum of that sine wave right now is at 5.2 volts, um, which is slightly higher than what the function generator is set at, uh, which is fine. But then I want to see what the output is, because the idea is, is that this is supposed to be a low-pass filter. Now, when we say low-pass filter and we're filtering out low frequencies, you have to be careful. It doesn't mean that the frequencies are going to be super low. The frequencies could be you know, anything below 1 megahertz, which 1 megahertz is a fairly high frequency. It's just the idea that there's some cutoff frequency, and everything above that cutoff frequency does not get passed and everything below it um, does get passed. So let me grab a wire here because the output for this is right there on the capacitor. So I'm going to connect that in for the output. And then I'm going to connect another ground up here. And now I'm going to go back to the oscilloscope. And we can see the blue curve is there. Now, it's got a maximum right now of 4.2 volts, or between 4.2 and 4.12. And we can also see that there's a little bit of a phase shift. And a phase shift meaning that it's been shifted to the right a little bit here, this graph. Um, and that is just a function of filters. Uh, when we look at the plot here, we're going to get both a magnitude and a phase, and we'll be able to see why is there that phase shift. Now, what I'm going to do here on the function generator is I'm just going to play with the frequency. I'm going to adjust the frequency. So you see I'm turning the frequency down here, and I'm going to adjust the horizontal position. So I'm turning it down to 1 kilohertz is what the frequency is at now. It's at 1 kilohertz. Now, I can't really see the waveform, so I'm going to adjust my horizontal scale. And of course, right now it looks like I just have one waveform. Um, because of the fact that the input and output are essentially lying on top. If I move this up and down a little bit, we can see both um, waveforms. And remembering that this is where um, ground is, like where you put your zero volts on the scale. So I like to leave it on top there. So we can see then at a lower frequency, like one kilohertz, it is absolutely um, passing that signal through. Now I'm going to go back up to a higher frequency. Here, let me just go up to 150 kilohertz. And now I have to adjust my horizontal scale again because you know, this is pretty ugly. We can see there's still a phase shift, but what we can clearly see here is that the voltage has started to drop. Look here. We can see that the input voltage maximum is 5.12 volts and the output is 3.56. So we're starting to filter the signal in the sense that not as much of the signal is getting on the output. Now if I keep increasing the frequency, we can see that maximum value, this dial doesn't work extremely well, keeps getting lower and lower.
Okay, so now let me just adjust the scale again a little bit. So I'm at 730 kilohertz right now, and I've got the inputs at 5.04 volts, but the output's only at 1.08 volts. Now, you might say there's still a lot of voltage on the output, but remember, it's not really the voltage that matters, it, it's the power. Voltage is something that we use to measure things, but it's how much power of the signal is getting out. And remember that cutoff frequency is when we would be at half power. All right, so this is all well and good just to verify that this filter is working properly. But as far as taking measurements, creating a Bode plot, this is terrible. Um, number one, you'd basically have to record like, you know, maybe 200 different data points at different frequencies, convert all of the voltages to decibels, um, and you know, divide things, and also the accuracy of the oscilloscope with the function generator is not very good, and so we would not get a very good reading for this. So we want to use a different piece of equipment to actually analyze the circuit. And I'm going to um, pause this video a second. Uh, it's only 11 minutes right now, the video. So I'm going to go ahead and you know, it might get to up to 30 minutes, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and shift the camera here. First, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Turn these things off. I'm not using them anymore. I'm going to disconnect these components here because I'm not going to use these anymore because I'm going to use a different piece of equipment. Now, you may have seen this equipment in the lab sitting by the window. Um, this equipment here is what's called a network analyzer. Um, it's actually a very um, useful piece of equipment. It's also um, very expensive. Here, I'll see if I can get my tablet lined up here. I might just have to hold it, and you get to see a reflection of me in there right now. So this is what we're going to use here. So I'm going to turn it on. It takes a little bit of a second for it to fire up here. So I'm going to turn it on, and while it's warming up, I'm going to pull the three cables down, and talk about these. Well, first off, these two cables, there's a T and there's an R here. Um, that stands for transmit and receive. Um, I'm sorry, not transmit and receive. It stands for, actually, it's just T over R. I'm not sure exactly what it stands for. But what you want to notice in here is it says 1 meg slash 50 ohm. So these can be either 1 mega ohm or 50 ohm. By default, this is set up for one mega ohm inputs. So we need to have the oscilloscope probes in here because they have one meg impedance. And I'm going to push this back just a tiny bit. I don't want to push it off my desk here. Let's see if I can get this. Okay, there we go. And then, well, maybe. Crash, boom cables got stuck underneath my tablet and then I tried to get them out and suddenly it crashes. So the other thing though you should notice is that there's an LF out which stands actually for low frequency out. That's essentially um, our function generator. So we have a 50 ohm resistor in the function generator uh, as far as the cable goes. So this is a 50 ohm cable, the coax cable that we typically use in our function generator. And I know there's a little bit of a glare there. I'll put my head in front of it. Um, but to set this up here actually takes quite a bit of process to set it up. So let's first go through the setup here. So I'm going to come in here. And if it's a little shaky, I apologize. The first thing we have to do is we have to look at the measurement type here. And actually, this has a mouse connected to it, so I'm going to use the mouse, maybe. Okay, so measurement type. You want to change this from S parameter up here to gain phase. And you'll see this really ugly, noisy stuff going on right now. That's fine. If you want to turn that off, just go to trigger and just do to hold, and then it will just stop. And we're going to want it on hold anyway. So I went to the trigger menu here, and I did hold. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to set up the number of traces. So we need to go to display. I'm going to put two traces in, 
because I'm going to want to do both the magnitude and the phase. Now currently they're both on the same plot, so I might want to have two plots. So if you go to allocate traces, so let's just go back to where I'm saying I'm doing display. I hit the number of traces. Now I'm going to allocate traces and I'm going to select this. And now you can see there is two traces here. And as you can see, as my finger touches each of them on the left hand side, it tells you which one you're currently highlighting. So I want to highlight the second one because I want to change that. They're both T over R right now. And I don't want T over R. What I want is T over R for one of them and then the phase for the other. Okay, so now th that's just getting the system set up for getting ready to display the measurements. Now, we now need to do something that's called the averaging. Um, and there's this IFBW, which it says that it's on auto. You want that from off to on. And then you want to change this IFBW to 100 hertz. And we'll talk about why we do those things in a later course. For now, we just want to start learning on how um, to do some of these measurements. The next thing we want to do is also go to the scale button here. I'm going to hit scale. And I want to, actually before I do scale, I want to do sweep setup. My, my sweep setup, first off, it's doing 201 points. We can go ahead and increase that if we want to, like let's just do 401. And all I'm doing to do that is there's just a little dial over here, a little pad here, so I'm just typing the numbers in. Um, for instance, I'm just doing 401. Or you could use keyboard and mouse that are attached to it as well. And so then I'm going to hit enter for that. But then the important thing here is we don't want it to be a linear frequency sweep. When we do Bode plots, we want logarithmic. So I want a log scale. And you'll be able to see that you have a log scale because the graphs here will kind of have changed their um, images here. Now that we're ready to do this, now we can go ahead and go to scale. And the reason I want to go to scale is, well, right now 0 dB is in the middle here. And I know that the maximum gain I can get out of a passive filter is 0 dB. So if I do reference value here and I put in a negative, let's say 40 dB, what that does is it shifts it up so that we get the zero at the top of the graph and we get more room for the negative. And that's just helpful so that we can see the filter trail off more if we need to. The other thing here is that this um, For the uh, um, phase, it's at 90 degrees per division, which goes all the way down to negative 450, all the way up to 450. We don't need that uh, many there because we're actually um, only really needing to be between 180 and um, negative 180. So I'm going to change that initially to 45 here. And you can see the scale on the left-hand side has changed as well. Okay, so we're still not ready to take a measurement yet. We still have to do some setup. So I have to do go to, s I went to start here now, and I have to tell it what frequency I want to start at. Well, I'm going to start these at 10 hertz, and then the stop frequency, um, I'll go ahead and stop this. Uh, we'll just go ahead and leave it at 30 megahertz. This thing can go up to 500 megahertz as far as the stop frequency. And now you can see that the graph paper has changed a little bit as well um, because of all of that. Now, I'm still not ready to take a measurement. The next thing I have to do is calibrate my probes. Remember, this is a very high precision piece of equipment. So I need to calibrate my probe. So I hit the calibrate button. And I'm going to show you what you first need to do here to calibrate your probes. I'm going to take all three of these probes 
and I'm going to connect all of the grounds together. And you don't use wires to do this. You actually have to just connect the clips together. So I connect all three of the grounds together. And then I'm going to connect all three of the positives or inputs or measurements together. Maybe. I need to hook this around. Come on. There we go. So I got all three of the grounds connected and all three of the inputs connected. So then I'm going to go to calibrate here. And there's lots of different options here. We're just going to go to calibrate. And now there's several different types. There's an open, a short, and a through. But because we're doing a transfer function here, a Bode plot, we want to do a through calibration. And so I'm going to click on through. And then I'm going to click on um, the uh, through again. And you're going to see it's going to run through. And we should get, once it's done calibrating, notice how it's going slow at first. It's always slow for lower frequencies. But then it's scrolling all the way through, and I'm getting 0 dB. Basically, it's determining all of these resistances at different frequencies, all of these different impedances that might be present at all of the different frequencies, and basically averaging them all out. Because it knows right now, because you've literally connected the input up to the output with no other circuitry, that you should be getting 0 dB. So it's using that to configure the probes. OK, so you have to do that once. And once it's done, um, it will beep. You might not have heard the beep because of the mic. Um, but then I hit return. And actually, um, I can just go down to, um, why is my display not showing? Two traces. I don't know why that went away there for a second. But I went back and put the display on two traces. Now we're actually ready to connect this up and do a measurement. OK, so let's bring, uh, actually, let me go ahead and move it over like this here. So you need to make sure to connect things up correctly here. First off, the LF out, remember that's your low frequency out. So that is the input. That's your function generator. So that's the input. So that would go right here. That's the input. And then the other end would have to connect to ground. Now the R also gets connected to the input. And I'll show you how you can remember that the R probe always gets connected to the input. So I'm going to connect the R probe up to the input as well. And then I'm going to connect that one also to ground. And then finally, the T probe gets connected to the output. So I'll connect that one up to the output and then connect it up to ground. All right. So the way you know always to connect the R to the input is, remember, this is like my function generator here. And look, R is literally right next to it. So R always gets connected to the function generator. And then this is the output you know, of the filter. So this is the function generator. You connect this up to the input of the function generator. This is the output, always. OK. So we're actually ready to perform a measurement here. And so when I'm ready to perform a measurement, I go to trigger, and I just do a single measurement. And so I'm going to do a single sweep. And right now, I'm getting 0 dB, because the little arrow there, you can see that's moving across the screen, is giving you the measurements, which should make sense to us because of the fact that it's a low-pass filter. But as I increase frequency, I should get that the filter tails down, which it does. See, I get this nice little, my fingers, I get this nice little curve, and then it starts to curve down. Now you say, well, wait, what's going on here? It's curving up. Well, what happens here 
is we're at such high frequency now that even though these are passive components, um, because these are cheap components, weird stuff can start happening when you get to really high frequencies. Um, and we are starting to get to really high frequencies. And so that's, you know, again, something that would be talked about in a later course. Um, but we can see here clearly there's this nice little turn down here. And we can see also this phase shift that we were noticing when we looked at it on the oscilloscope because it has it right here, the phase. It's at zero degrees phase shift, and then we're getting down into like negative 90 degree phase shift. And then, yeah, it does something weird here at the end. All right, but we got the measurement. Now, what we really want to be able to do is have this machine determine what the 3 dB point is. And fortunately, it can do that. If I go to here, there's an option that's called marker search. And if I do marker search, and then I click on target, I can actually tell it what I want to target. Now, you have to make sure you have the correct graph selected. So, you know, if you have this graph selected, that's not what I want to search for. I want to search on, on the magnitude graph here. And what I want, I want the minus 3 dB point. So I'm just going to say minus 3. And it brings it up right here. It um, gives you that information. I'm going to, I was trying to zoom in with my computer there, but the light got really weird. Okay, you can see right there um, the minus 3 dB and it is at 159.22 kilohertz. You know, and so what, again, I'm trying to illustrate with this machine is this machine is actually a very useful piece of equipment um, that can do very complicated measurements that one, if we try to do it with the oscilloscope, we'd have to do 400 data points by hand, number one. And number two, the graphs wouldn't look like this. They would be very ugly. They wouldn't look this nice and smooth like what they actually are. Um, and that's just because of the um, issues with the oscilloscope. Now, the one thing I can also do is I will be able to basically perform these measurements for you from your design um, for you on both the high pass and low pass. Then I'll be able to do um, basically take these images and give them to you so that you can use these images in your lab reports. Um, but remember, you have to get your designs to me by Tuesday at noon Otherwise, I will not be able to get this to you. And your lab reports will still be due on Friday. Um, and so you will not have complete lab reports. So make sure that you get this lab um, working on it and make sure you get your design. Now, the design really shouldn't take you that much time. All right. So sorry about the little shakiness there, shakiness, but it was the only way to get it so that I could get the whole machine and look at different parts of it. Now, we are just scratching the surface on the capabilities of this machine. We will look at it in future classes as well.